This is video number three for Excel module one in the Shelley Cashman book on Microsoft Office 365. We are on the bottom of page 146. We're going to add a pie chart to our spreadsheet. If you ever need to turn numbers into pictures, uh, Excel is probably a good first choice. You can do a lot of different types of basic charts in Excel. And it's pretty easy to do, and they look pretty good when you get done. So let's go to the top of page 1 47. We want to select the range A9 to A16. So that's going to be our expenses categories. And then we want to select the numbers over here in column N. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay. Hold the control key down. We're doing a non adjacent selection here. So column A should remain selected while we select column N. Then we are going to insert a chart. Click on insert up here. We have a two dimensional pie chart. Let's select pie chart. And with just one click, uh, you get a pretty decent looking chart. But we're going to make some modifications in it. So turn to page 1 48, click the chart title to select it. So click on it, drag the mouse over the text. Notice that when you do that, the solid line around the edge turns from a solid line into a dotted line. And we're going to put our own title in here. We're going to put in monthly expenses. And then click somewhere to deselect it. Now we're at the bottom of page 1 48. We're going to apply a style to a chart. So here's our chart styles. Let's click on the more button. We'll see what we've got here. We want style number six. So if we work our way through here, that is going to be style number six. Click on style six. Now let's go to page 1 49. We want to move that chart to a new sheet. So select the chart. It's selected if the handles appear around it. So we know that it's selected right now. When it's selected, the chart design ribbon will appear up here. If I want to get rid of that, all I have to do is select someplace else. And now my chart ribbon disappears. I click back on it and my chart design ribbon reappears. What I want to do is I want to move the chart. That's the last option on the ribbon up here. So go ahead and click on move chart. We want to move it to a new sheet. Click on new sheet. And we're going to change the name of that from the default chart one to monthly expense chart. Go ahead and click on OK. It moves it to a brand new sheet all by itself and it enlarges the chart significantly. So we've got a descriptive name for this worksheet. Our other worksheet was called sheet one and still called sheet one. That's the default. Click on that and then actually double click on it. And it'll highlight the name and we can rename this. We're going to call that monthly finances. Go ahead and hit enter when you're done. We're now at the top of page 1-51. Right click on the sheet tab down here with the title. And we're going to change the color. Click on tab color here. And the color that we want is column 10, row 1. It's called green accent 6. Go ahead and click on that. It's a green color here, but to indicate that this one is selected, the color gets lightened up significantly. If I click on another sheet down here, you'll see the actual color of the tab. Number three on page 1-51 says we want to save that. So let's go up here and click on save. And now we're going to skip over to page 1-53. Print and preview a worksheet in landscape orientation. So, okay, let's go back to our monthly finances worksheet. Click on the tab down there and we will see our income and expenses sheet. I'll go to the bottom of page 1-53, previewing and printing a worksheet. So we're going to go to our file tab for printing. This is similar to what it was in Word. Click print. We'll get a print preview. You notice this is three pages long. There's probably a better way to print that. So let's go to page 1-54. It says verify that we've got the printer that we want. This will vary depending on what you happen to be connected to. If you want to print more than one copy, use the copies up here to increase the number of copies. If you want to change the paper size, you can change the paper size down here where right now it says letter. That's probably what you have on yours as well. Click the page orientation button. And right now it's in portrait orientation. We want to change it to landscape. Notice if we do that, we're down to two pages instead of three. Click the No Scaling button 
and then select fit the sheet on one page. So one of our options here under scaling is to fit the sheet on one page. So go ahead and click on that and it shrinks it down to fit on one page. So if we go to the top of page 1-55, we're ready to print that, although that text is kind of small. But it's going to be a little smaller than it would otherwise be because you remember I widened the columns a little bit more than the author recommended. So if you want to print this now, you click on the print button. I'm not going to print it. Okay, let's click our back arrow to go back to our normal view. And we're at the bottom of page 1-56 now. We want to select the range B19 to M19. So B19 is right here to M19 over here. One thing you may have noticed is that whenever you make a selection of numbers up here, down on the status bar, it always shows you these three things. It shows you the average of those numbers. It shows you how many numbers there are selected. And it shows you the sum of those numbers. And those are kind of handy once in a while. And uh, sometimes you might want something else, though. So we're going to right-click on this. We've got a bunch of other things that we can customize on our status bar. And one of those options is maximum. He wants us to select maximum, so go ahead and click on maximum. Go ahead and click off of that menu. And the maximum down here is 16,625. So there's a bunch of other options that you could put in there too. So if there's something that you would like to know all the time, you can just click it here and put it on the status bar. You can just click it here and put it on the status bar. Okay, let's go to page 1-57. We're going to look at correcting errors. And he doesn't actually have anything for you to do. It's just a little bit of reading. So I'll let you read that on your own. Let's go to the top of page 1-59. If you want to undo the undo button is up here if you want to do more than one thing you can well i've only got one thing to uh, undo here because i just saved it actually i'm going to turn auto save off so you can pick as many things here as you want to undo if you want to undo more than one thing at a time and you can also redo and of course the keyboard shortcut for undo is always Control z let's take a look at the bottom of page 1-59 it talks about a number of ways to clear a range of cells. Uh, the easiest way is probably just to drag the mouse over them and hit the delay key, which is what I'm going to do right now. And they're gone. I'm going to undo that, bring them back. Now, they disappeared, but the formatting did not. If I went to put numbers back in here, they would still inherit the same formatting. Uh, the colors of the rows did not change. There is an option on the Home tab over here in the Editing group under Clear. You can clear all, which will be the formats and the data. Go ahead and click on that. And everything is back to just a plain empty white cell. I want to undo that. So if you just want to clear the data, you can just select it, hit the delete key. If you want to actually clear the data and the formatting, just go up to your clear button up here and make the appropriate choice. If you want to clear the entire worksheet, here's how you select the entire worksheet. This little triangle up here in the upper left hand corner, you can select everything in the worksheet, press the delete key, and everything is gone. If you want to clear the formatting as well, you can go up here and do clear formats, and now you're back to an empty sheet. I didn't want to do that permanently though, so I'm going to hit undo twice, and now we're back to where we were before. So at the top of page 1 61, we want to obtain help using the search text box. So click on help up here. Let me unselect this stuff down here. Click on Help up here. You'll get the Help ribbon. Click on the Help button over here, the one with the blue question mark on it. It'll open up a Help window for you over here on the side. You can type in whatever it is that you want to find out more about. We want to find out more about functions. So we're going to type in Functions. Excel has dozens, possibly hundreds of built-in functions, which do automatic calculations for you. So type in functions, hit enter, and we'll get some results for functions. We want Excel functions by category. Very first one here, go ahead and click on that. And it'll give us a bunch of choices here of different types of functions and different categories that we can look at. And you can pick one of these. Let's just click on um, math and uh, let's do statistical functions. Click on the down arrow here and it gives you a whole bunch of statistical functions that you can use. 
Okay, so anytime you need help, that's what you can do. Go ahead and click on the X. You can also go out to the internet, which is what I usually do instead. Click on the X up here. Now we're back to our normal view. Go to page 1 64 now. And if we want to save the workbook with a different file name, just like it was in Word, go to the File tab up here. If you want to change the name, click on Save As. If you want to copy over the existing file, click on Save. So we're going to do Save As because we want a new name. We're going to browse and again i'm going to go to the desktop and because that's the last place i went to it's bringing that up by default and we change the name of this to sc for shelly cashman underscore aex for excel underscore one for module one underscore frangold it'll save it as an excel workbook with an xlsx file extension go ahead click on save And when we return to normal view here, we'll see the file name has now changed. Okay, and the last thing in this section is signing out of a Microsoft account. I'm going to skip that, so that brings us to the end of Module 1 for Excel.